explain the tragedy of the commons uh, model in Bensim. Okay, so we're here in the lecture 9 directory and I'm going to fire up the tragedy of the commons model that's there. Uh, so Bensim is going to start up and you're going to see that this this model it's, it looks pretty involved. It's actually relatively simple and let's try to take it piece by piece. Uh, I'm going to focus on the on the upper part of the Benson model sketch, which is the um, which is this one here, which is the grass dynamics model. Okay, and the grass in this model is um, it's a resource that's uh, renewable, um, and uh, so grass is the only stock in that part of the model, um, and um, and we'll we'll go um, through the specifics um, of the units, uh, etc. In a second, the grass is a stock. Uh, it the grass um, has a growth. Um, of grass uh, that's driven by a grass growth rate. Okay, um, uh, there's an initial stock of grass that appears here, um, and then there's uh, grass is consumed. Uh, the the depletion of the of the grass stock is caused by consumption by sheep. Okay, and and, and that consumption occurs in, in these three uh, sheep cohorts. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, there's a couple variables here, like the maximum grass. So this is the maximum size of the grass stock, uh, which was referred to in the lecture. Uh, let me walk you through the equations now uh, of the of the model. And um, so first of all, let me look at the grass stock. If you do that, it's, um, it's essentially it is the difference between the grass growth and the grass consumption. Okay, um, except for the fact that if that goes above 1,000, then um, uh, you know you, you never can go above 1,000. So we added this minimum statement here. So the grass is the minimum of those two. Okay, um, it's a stock variable um, level in Benzim. It's got units of hectares. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it for for the grass stock. Let's look at the grass growth. And the grass growth is essentially a um, it's a product of the grass stock times the growth rate. Of the grass, okay, and that has units of hectares per year. Um, and um, if you look at the grass growth rate that feeds into the grass growth, um, this essentially is um, it's the it's the equation. Um, this is the equation for the straight line that is in the lecture, uh, and this ba this basically means that the um, the growth rate of grass decreases as the grass gets depleted. Okay, um, uh, so if um, um, you know if, if we're close to if we're close to the, um, the the maximum grass rate, you essentially run out of grass. Um, at the beginning, when when grass is very little, uh, the growth rate is uh, is very high. So it's essentially it's sort of it's sort of a self-regulating grass growth. If there's a lot of grass, there's not a whole lot of um, intent to grow. Um, incentive to grow if there's little grass and it grows a lot okay so it's fairly straightforward in that regard um, the maximum grass here is set to a thousand okay um, hectares nothing less there uh, and the initial grass in this uh, in this simulation is set at 250 hectares okay actually I'm going to add the hectares because that should be there it's not there now bad professor um, so now it's fixed, <laughs> um, and uh, again, that can be you know that can be changed. You can you can tweak that along when you play with the model. You can tweak or tweak around with the uh, within with the grass initial grass. Um, let's look at the consumption rates that feed into the grass consumption, and, and they all more or less look the same. Uh, and these are these straight lines. Let me pull this one up, and this is essentially the equation of a straight line, uh, meaning that uh, sheep. Uh, Tend to consume more grass if there's more grass available. Okay, per per capita. So this is a uh, this has units of hectares of grass consumed per sheep per year. Okay, so the rationale here, and you know this could be changed as well, but the rationale here for the simple model is that 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 is a is it's a proportional rate. So the more the the more there there's a grass, the more they consume. Of course, there's a maximum. It's still bounded by the maximum. Okay. And these are all, you know, very similar. If you look at this, the only difference is that the the older the sheep, the more they consume. Okay, so adult uh, adult sheep consume more than young sheep, and then, um, you know, if you go to the last ones, the the mature sheep consume the most. But that's essentially it. 
I'm going to fix these units here so when you get the model, actually you, you know, you get this right. Okay, I think the consumption here. Okay, that was okay. So anyway, that that takes care of the consumption, um, and that's pretty much for the grass part. Okay, so the grass stock is modulated by a natural, you know, growth rate that's that's repleted or replaced or regenerated as the grass gets consumed. Um, and then consumption by sheep by the different sheep classes. Now, so let's look. Take a look now at the bottom part of the model, which is the perhaps a more interesting one, which is the sheep population dynamics. So, and that's this portion of the model here. Okay, uh, that's this. You know, this this entire. Let me actually highlight this, so we can you can take a look at it. So this this entire portion of the model is the sheep population dynamics so you can take a look at all the interactions uh, and it's a little bit looks cumbersome but it's it's actually not that complicated let's because actually the three cohorts have a similar uh, structure for their dynamics so here we have three stocks um, the young sheep between zero and one year old the adult sheep between one and two year old and then the mature sheep between two and three years old okay now, um, for each of these uh, stocks of sheep, there's essentially four mechanisms or four rates uh, um, that um, that actually go in and out. Okay. Uh, in the case of the young sheep, okay, the young sheep get born. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that now. Um, the young sheep also can die. Okay. The young sheep can age and mature into the next uh, age group, okay? And actually, sheep get added uh, into the into the commons, okay? And um, and uh, they get added by some you know some rationale, some strategy by the villagers that own the sheep, okay? Um, so let's, let's take, take take a walk around each of these components. Uh, the births um, of sheep are found to be, and I'll, I'll just start showing you the equations, but essentially the birth of sheep, as we state in the lecture, are a function of the, of the uh, mature uh, cohort. Okay, so um, essentially the, the rationale there is that the sheep that are born in the commons are only born from the mature cohort. Okay, so basically this, say, this says that, that only the mature cohort reproduces, which is, which is uh, very realistic. Okay. Um, so if you look at the equation for the births, uh, what you're going to see is that it's uh, essentially 12%. This is an annual rate, 12% of uh, the sheep in the third cohort, okay, or in the mature cohort. Straightforward. Um, let's look at deaths, okay. Uh, deaths are driven by a death rate of sheep, okay. And uh, let me take a look at that um, at that. Uh, those deaths and uh, look at those deaths is essentially uh, it's the death rate multiplied by the population of sheep. Okay, it's got units of sheep per year. Again, nothing we haven't seen before. Now the death rate itself, if you look at the equation here, it's um, it's essentially um, uh, it's uh, an exponential uh, a function of consumption. So what this is saying is that um, you know if uh, um, you know, and we and, and we've we've seen this in the in, in the lecture notes, but essentially what we're saying here is that the um, uh, the rate uh, at which uh, uh, sheep die uh, or the death of sheep are are related to how much grass they consume. So if they consume if they consume plenty of grass, if they have plenty of grass to consume, that the death rate falls. Uh, it's much lower. However, if they start running uh, out of, uh, you know, if consumption is very, very small because there's uh, presumably less grass available, then there'll be more deaths, okay? And it's an exponential function um, uh, that can be, you know, can be there and can be parameterized and replaced. Um, so essentially, these deaths are tied to consumption of grass, okay? So that's the, the shadow variable here. Um, so consumption drives the death, and the death, uh, the death rate dr drives the number of deaths. Okay. Um, the uh, 
the proportion of sheep out of the sheep that are present that do not die in the commons are able to age and move on to the next uh, cohort. Okay, so that's the um, that's the um, the rationale for uh, this out uh, uh, flux that occurs here. Okay, so if you look at the equation for um, for the out uh, flux, uh, you'll see that the out flux is uh, essentially an out rate times the population of sheep, and that out rate here, it's essentially uh, one minus the death rate. Okay, so um, sheep either die or they age. That's the, the two outcomes for sheep in the cohort. Again, fairly straightforward. Um, now, the, in the added, this the the added. Um, uh, part is where uh, sort of human intervention comes in more blatantly. Um, and um, here, as we discussed in the lecture, uh, we've, we've talked about uh, essentially uh, two major approaches. Uh, and, um, you know, both of these approaches are assumed to be rational, uh, meaning that we only add sheep to the commons if, um, if, if we're seeing that the shape that age the outs are larger than the deaths. So uh, if 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 we if that happens, we assume that the commons is working properly. There's you know if there's um, the commons are, are serving the purpose of, of making sheep grow, and then that that creates the conditions by which you should or could add sheep to the to the to commons. Okay, um, so. So that's a, that's a common element, and, we, and we've called that the rationality or rational approach. Now, uh, within the rational approach, then there's two major approaches. The what we refer to in the lecture as, as the short-sighted uh, approach, um, which means that you add you add sheep only as a function of the sheep that are present in the commons. Okay, you pay no attention to the condition of the grass or the availability of grass. Um, the on the other on the other end of things, uh, uh, there's the conscientious approach, which means that you pay attention, you know, in, in order to decide how if if you're gonna um, 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 not that if you're gonna add sheep, but how many sheep you're going to add, um, then you um, essentially take a look at how much grass is available and then decide based on that. Okay, uh, so those are the two approaches that are, that are here. If you look at the equation for or for the add or any cohort, uh, we'll take a look at this. Then that's this is the statement by which that happens. Okay, um, and this makes use of an if-then-else statement in Benson, uh, which basically allows you to introduce those two conditions. See here uh, that this is how the statement is read. You know, if the outs are greater or equal than the deaths. So, so this is the rational piece. So this tells you that you only add sheep. To the commons, if if there's a higher proportion of sheep that are uh, aging into the next uh, cohort, okay. So the front, the sort of the, the commons is working properly, so to speak. Um, and then if that happens, then um, the um, the number of sheep that you add, it's a coefficient, which um, it's a coefficient of short sightedness. Uh, times the total number of sheep, so you add the three sheep stocks, okay, plus a coefficient of conscientiousness times the, the, the stock of grass. And then you can you can tweak the coefficients of short-sightedness and conscientiousness to combine or, or take one or the other. If you make the short-sightedness zero, then your approach is purely conscientious. If your conscientiousness, conscientiousness coefficient is zero, then you're purely short-sighted, and then you can combine the two. Okay, and uh, so that's essentially the the logic and the rationale for um, um, for that addition of sheep. Uh, the same structure that appears here is applicable to the sheep in the next cohort. Okay, uh, the sheep in the next cohort, instead of births, they don't have births now, but instead of births, what they have is the sheep that age in from the previous cohort. Okay. Uh, then um, they die, and then and, and the death uh, is calculated in a very similar way. Uh, the death rate in that cohort is driven by consumption of grass of that cohort. Um, and then there's the out rate, which is uh, the the number of outs from the second cohort are whichever do not die from that cohort. And then sheep get added um, 
to that cohort according to the same rationale. So if you open up the equation, you're going to see something very similar. The only thing that changes here is the um, essentially the, the logic for the number of cohort, for the, co for the cohort number. In the case of the third cohort of sheep, uh, then you have uh, the mechanism of sheep the flux in are the outs from the second cohort. Okay, um, And these sheep can die again, and the death rate of those sheep is driven by their consumption of grass. Again, same same deal. Now, the in this case, the outs of the third cohort are essentially removed from the system. So they don't go into a next cohort. They just go, they, they get pulled out of the commons, presumably because these sheep, once they're mature, they, they're sold in the market or they're eaten, uh, they're used for something else. Maybe they let them out into another commons for them to play, whatever. Okay, So they age out of the commons. And then the added is again the same, you know, the same logic as before. So the same, you know, same equation. Um, you know, that doesn't change. So, um, so that's essentially um, the logic for uh, for that part of the model. And then, you know, of course, you can run this. Uh, you can do all sorts of things. The way I set it up in here is that I have uh, essentially three. Uh, sorry, uh, five graphs, uh, three for the three cohorts, and then uh, the grass coverage and the total sheep, which is the addition of the of the number of these. And you can you can run this very quickly, uh, and you can generate these graphs. In this case, uh, I'm running uh, you know now the purely conscientious approach, which is uh, in the lecture. Um, and uh, if you go back to the parameters, uh, you can see then for this simulation, uh, the short sightedness coefficient. Uh, oops, let me switch back to the equation view. The short sightedness coefficient is zero. Uh, so this is purely a conscientious approach, and the conscientiousness is, uh, you know, some value. The, uh, as I explained in the lecture, uh, the way I chose these values was more, more or less to match the the total number of sheep in, in, in both approaches to be more or less the same, at least on average, and then see what happened to the grass. Um, um, and... Um, and you can do, but you can do a similar exercise. You can have, a, you know, you can, um, let me actually lock this again so we can take a look at the graphs. Uh, and you can think about this, you know, similar procedure where you would you essentially compare, uh, you know, like what are the number of sheep in both approaches that you can, you can have on the commons at any given time for for a given amount of grass. So that's the, you know, those, that, those sort of type of questions that you can answer with a model like this. Um, so... As I explained in the in the lecture, uh, you know, one of the things that that I introduced into this model, in addition to to this, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quit out of this, um, uh, say no, uh, was to add uh, essentially. There's another a second model, the commons model, which has the financial or the the cost benefit component, the economics. Um, and for some reason, okay, here we go some reason that model is giving me a hard time opening the first time. But um, this model is essentially the same. Uh, it looks a little bit more crowded up here, but I wanted to focus this part of the video on uh, the bottom piece, uh, which is the cost benefit. Okay. And um, the way this works, uh, and uh, we'll look at the equations, is that, uh, you know, uh, the, model the model calculates the number of sheep uh, in each cohort over time, okay? And if you imagine, um, you know, each, uh, you know, each each sheep of each cohort has got, you know, uh, and, you know, it's got a value in the market, okay? So this assumes that you can sell in a market uh, each of these sheep. And uh, in this case, uh, the um, uh, the way I set it up just to, uh, for purposes of comparison, is that the um, you know, the, the older sheep, the mature sheep are the most expensive, okay? Those are the ones that you can get a better price of and, and uh, you know, and, and then the, the revenues, uh, so if you look at the revenue for um, the, I guess for the third sheep, for the third cohort uh, here, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 1.3, so 30% higher than the revenue for the second cohort. So mature sheep sell 30% higher than young sheep. 
uh, I'm sorry, adult sheep. Adult sheep sell for $100 a piece, okay? $100 per sheep. And then the young, um, the young ones sell at half of a uh, half of that, of the of the adult, and that might you know that rationale might not be um, completely the case, but um, let's assume for the time being that there is a uh, there, there's a differential in price between the three cohorts, um, and uh, those three three revenues uh, can generate an annual sales revenue, okay, which is the essentially the product of the this is the addition of the revenues per sheep of each cohort times the number of sheep in each cohort, and you add everything up, and then you get the total revenue. And that, then we what we do is that we it essentially, um, you know, bring back you, you we convert that um, uh, to essentially a um, you know to a present value to assess uh, what strategy makes most most sense from an economic standpoint. Okay, um, so essentially, if you if you if you sell sheep um, in the future, you know, ten years from now, fifteen years from now, two years from now, you convert everything to present value to understand today the implications of a given distribution of sheep in cohorts. Okay, and this actually uh, right now it's it's not built into the logic of the added sheep, and maybe it could be, but. Um, um, it actually gives you an idea, at least of the outcome in terms of revenue of each adding strategy. Okay, uh, but you can think of a, a scenario where you could modify the added uh, strategies here to include a component that would that would stimulate or would would provide better economic return. Okay, so I'll leave you to think about that, and it's actually uh, one of the one of the questions that I post. Uh, in the lecture. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here. Uh, I think you get you get the idea, and uh, I want you to play um, with this uh, model. I want you to change parameters. You know what what happens, for example, if uh, you know the younger sheep are more expensive, or because you know people think that they'll they can they, they'll they can grow, etc. Um, what happens if there's a tax charged to introduce? sheep into the system how would that change the dynamics of of the sheep and how how would that change the the revenues generated do a little bit of research as to what policies uh, can work to make common resources managed in a sustainable manner that that can give you some hints as, as to what can be done here but you can clearly see how a model like this can help you understand the different implications fairly quickly um, and uh, I'll just run this model for you to see the results. And in this case, uh, you can see that the you, know, you can you know this and these are the graphs that are in the, in the lecture file. Um, you know you can compute. Uh, and this is again for the short sightedness approach. Um, you know you can compute the um, <clears throat> the the grass coverage uh, over time, the 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 annual sales revenue over time. Um, as well as the number of sheep, and if you if you were to change uh, that to you refresh uh, the view here, if you change from a purely, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch off the the conscien con your conscientiousness. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna go I'm gonna go short sighted, um, and um, I think the value of 0 0.8 will give you a similar amount of grass than before. Um, and then you can run this, um, and then you can look at the results. And you can see here um, that you know you get these fluctuations in the uh, that we discussed in class for uh, the short-sighted approach. Uh, but you get a you know you get about the same average you know hectares of grass over time you know 350 or thereabouts uh, 375. Um, but that, now look at what your sales revenue do. Uh, so you get, you get, um, you know, you get, sort of get higher peaks, but then you get these valleys. And so is this is this better financially for you or not? You know, for or or for the village, um, and um, and then you get you know the, the fluctuations in the number of sheep, the population of sheep. Okay, so you can play all sorts of uh, scenarios with this and try to understand the dynamics of the system. But certainly. You can see the um, in, in in this case in this in these simulations you can certainly see the the collapse 
in the number of sheep and certainly the, the drawdown of, of the grass resource. Okay, so anyway, I'll leave it at that um, and um, uh, hope uh, you enjoy this video and then you can get to play with this tragedy of the commons model. Uh, take care.